What's up Fox and Fox here and today we are pairing an 11600K with an RTX 3080. The i5-11600K is Intel's mid-range CPU with 6 cores, 12 threads, it has a base clock of 3.9 GHz and a boost of 4.9, but VK signifies that this can be overclocked, however you're going to want a beefy power supply because even without overclocking it has a TDP of 125 watts and if you overclock it generally does spike quite high. Um, and you can look at videos of power draw on this chip. So just be warned if you have a weaker power supply uh, and i5s typically worked in the past, your power supply may not work with this CPU. At over $100 more than the i5-11400, does it stack up better with an RTX 3080 or are you wasting your money? Or do you need something better than an i5 to run a 3080? Let's find it out, let's get in. The first game on the list is Outrider. At 1080p with everything on the ultra settings, we saw an average frame rate of 134 FPS with a 1% low of 10 and a 0.1% low of 3. Now, unfortunately, Outriders, no matter how many cores and gigahertz you have will stutter and this is not a signifier that you are bottlenecking with an 11600k it's just that outriders really is not that great in terms of um, optimization shadow of the tomb raider next with everything on ultra including rtx at 1080p had an average frame rate of 116 with a one percent low of 23 and a 0.1 percent low of four that 0.1 percent should be disregarded as it seemed to have happened during loading screens or when i started the benchmark and as you can tell by the video, there was not any stutter to speak of, so you'll have a great time with Shadow of the Tomb Raider with an 11600K and RTX 3080. Assassin's Creed Valhalla next. With everything on Ultra, at, you guessed it, 1080p, we had an average of 87 frames per second with a 1% low of 67 and a 0.1% low of 54. As you can tell by those 1% and 0.1% lows, there was no stutter to speak of, and... The game ran very, very well. This game definitely does not care much for CPU intensity as an 11400 only got about three frames lower. So if you have a six core CPU, anything more than that in Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be negatable. However, that said, I still do recommend an eight core CPU for the RTX 3080. Gears 5 next with everything on Ultra at 1080p ran with an average of 113 FPS with a 1% low of 75 and a 0.1% low of 11. This game is optimized for four cores, so anything more than that is going to work perfectly fine. Um, and I do not see this bottlenecking a 3080 with six cores and 12 threads in Gears 5. Black Ops Cold War next, and of course with everything on Ultra, including RTX, we saw an average of 135 frames per second with a 1% low of 80 and a 0.1% low of 6. I don't know where these super low 0.1% lows come from because I don't think it's from the CPU. Otherwise, the entire thing would be much lower, but it must have been one instance of a really low 1% low in this game because I never had any issues with it. And... Um, I kind of feel like you should just disregard most of these 1% or 0.1% lows and focus on the 1% low instead. Uh, and I will try to troubleshoot and see if it's something wrong with my benchmarking software because I don't think these games are as stuttery as they uh, are benchmarked to be. And last but not least, Fortnite with everything on Ultra at 1080p with RTX on medium and low, we saw an average of 53. This game got a pretty big overhaul since I last played it, which was like a week ago. Um, and there's dinosaurs in it now and stuff, and it does seem to have affected frame rates because this is actually running worse than it did on an 11400. Uh, and I don't know if that's because of this part of the map I was in or what, but I saw an average of 53 FPS with a 1% low of 32 and a 0.1% low of 3. Now, this game did have some stutters, but that could also be because of the internet. Um, but Fortnite is generally a pretty demanding game, even though it does lay back on the CPU a bit. But for being a cartoony aesthetic, especially the ray tracing on, this game is quite hard to run. So be on the lookout for that. With that said, though, those are all the gaming tests. Will an i5-11600K bottleneck a 3080? Well, I just got a new CPU, and you'll be able to see that on Saturday. So if you want to judge between these games and a top-of-the-line CPU and see if there's a big difference, uh, stay tuned for that. But I don't think that a 6-core, 12-threaded CPU with overclocking capabilities is going to overclock a 3080 to an extreme. I still think eight cores is probably the way to go for the future, but for right now, I think this CPU is a very good pairing with the 3080. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, like, subscribe, do what you usually do, and as always, buy yourself something nice.